All right, so let me be completely and totally honest for the first time in a while. I'm not happy, like really not happy. Now, I know that's a very strong way to start, so let me give you some backstory so you might understand a little bit of context as to where I'm coming from. You see, the day was January 20th, 2023, and you're probably like, Mike, what the heck is that random date all about? Well, you see, that was my nine year anniversary of the day when I first picked up the electric guitar, which was a really, really big milestone if you know anything about me. Back in college, I was called at times a serial hobbyist, which means I just jumped from one passion to the next and could never really find my thing. But there was something so special about my connection to this instrument, right? Like when I first picked it up, there was just this initial spark. It was like something special that I could connect to musically. And all I wanted to do was absorb as much information as possible in the moment. And it was this really beautiful thing. But as of lately, I've really felt like this spark has kind of diminished. And not my spark for playing the guitar and enjoying music, but that initial spark to learn the instrument and absorb all of that information. And I still do the occasional church gig where I play. I still make videos that I love doing and I still jam with friends and with my band. But I can't remember the last time I really pushed myself like I did in the early days, like to absorb all that information and to ignite that spark. And I think because of that, I've reached a juncture that a lot of guitar players have to face when you realize you're at a certain point in your life or at a certain point in your guitar playing journey. I'm just not the player that I want to be. And I want to be very candid about that. There are a lot of flaws and weaknesses in my guitar playing that I've been very reluctant to address because I know how much hard work it would take. And I remember how much hard work it took for me to just learn to strum a G chord. I was like, man, do I really want to go through that again? But I think with the instrument and with any passion you have in life, if you're not challenging yourself, if you're not actively trying to get better, like what are you doing? So in order to reignite that spark, I knew I would have to find something challenging. And if challenge is the avenue that we're pursuing, I know exactly what I have to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and learn jazz. Now you talk to any guitar player out there and they will tell you about jazz. Jazz, I feel like in the guitar world is seen as this next level thing. Like if you can play jazz, you can kind of play anything else. So it's a road I've never gone down. And in a lot of ways, it's a road that I very intentionally kind of avoided. And not only are we going to try and learn jazz, we're going to try and master jazz within seven days. You might be looking at me like, Mike, it took Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, like their entire lives to master jazz. And to that, I say, they never had Marty Schwartz. So I'm going to try and do it in seven days exactly 168 hours. Now, the other thing I know is that mastering jazz is a very broad statement, right? There are so many elements of jazz. So I tried to pick the elements that would challenge me the most, that I feel like would promote the most progress in my playing. Number one is a prepared piece. I wanna choose a piece of music that would really challenge me both harmonically and melodically to see if I could learn it on the guitar, something outside of my comfort zone, both speed-wise and technique-wise. Number two, I wanna get an understanding of arpeggios. I preach and preach about like target notes and like doing that in a blues context, but rarely ever really use it. And I know using that with jazz is like the most integral thing ever. And third is improvising. You talk to any blues player like myself, they're going to take a lot of pride in their ability to improvise on the spot. But for me, that's one of the areas where more recently I've been really disappointed with my playing. So learning a completely new realm of improvisation, I feel like would take a lot of my playing to the next level. Now, say Saying all this is cool, making plans is great, but if you never put those plans into action, you're not gonna do anything with your life. And I didn't really know where to start, so I actually ended up calling one of my friends for some help. Dude, how's it going? What up? You see, this is my friend Grant. He's a Belmont guitar grad, a huge Polyphia fan, and happens to be an excellent, excellent guitar teacher. So I asked him to show me some stuff and actually give me some pointers before I got going because I wanted to know from someone who actually knows jazz, like where in the world do I even start? Like what do I need to be learning? Let's, play some, let's learn some jazz. Dude, let's do it. I'm super excited about it. The main one we're learning is just kind of chord tones and how to build a solo around some chord tones. Very difficult, but I'm open So to it. we're doing just two five ones in the key of C, gonna kind of keep it simple-ish. Okay. And so with that, we're gonna start off first with our D minor seven. Yeah, okay. just like that. And so we're kind of trying to build all of these chords around our one, our threes, or for minors, flat threes, okay. fives, and then sevens, whatever kind of degree that is. Okay. And so for our D, we've got D, F, 
half. Uh, yep. Or C half hat. Yeah. A. Yep. And then C. And then back to D. Or big question. Yeah. Is like, where do I start? Because like usually if we were playing like a two five one, yeah, I would just go straight to the top. Yep. But like, do I start with the pentatonic and then go to the chord tones from there? Or do I start with the chord tones and then fill things in? I would start with the chord tones to generally kind of structure, anchor yourself. All right, so the lesson's going great at this point. I'm really learning a lot. It's a lot of information to take in, but I think that's just jazz in general. And then Grant, my teacher, suggests that we actually try some chord tone soloing. And that's when I realized jazz is hard. So let's just kind of take a second and work through that a little bit. I'll just kind of loop it and let you start okay. to start to figure it out just a little bit or kind of tinker around with some of these ideas. All right, let's do this. I'm still going back. So yes, as you can see, it was very difficult for me to solo like that and not immediately go to like my usual pentatonic scales, but I was ready to be active about what I've learned and to try some of these new things. So I'm listening back to just like the first 30 seconds of Donnelly so far and I'm like, this is going to be an impossible task, but something I want to take on. Okay. I think I got that. That's hard. Why do they do this with jazz, man? I'm gonna bring out the metronome. We're gonna put it less than half. We're at 50 BPM. This is less than half. Literally just looped one chord and I'm gonna solo over it. Whenever I mess up, all I can think is I wish J.K. Simmons was here to yell at me and motivate me. The next phrase is like 10 times harder. I just listened to it for the first time and I was like, oh, this is gonna stink. Got that. I think this phrase is easy because of the minor triads, but I'm also struggling because it's just like, it's a lot to choose. So I don't know if I'm even gonna try the full one to do it today. This second part is uniquely frustrating to me. So I'm taking it literally like one bite at a time. Just like, starting with just that. The last part was not really easy. It was a lot easier. And I don't think the notes, I don't feel like it's that much more of a difficult part, but I'm just having so much trouble memorizing it. Okay, I have, I have most of this phrase now. Three, four. We're consistent at around 70% right now. I'm still like, my brain hurts. Oh, this is gonna be impossible. I swear when it comes to scales, if I ever have to hear a D minor nine again, I don't know if I'll be able to pick up a guitar. It's day three and I can still, still feel like it's just D minor. Day four. I really push myself at 120. Now just the part, just slow, very slow. Like yesterday, I'm starting out very slow. There it was! That was close. It's not flowing, but that's at 100%. Alright, so it's day five. 
I started slow, like I always do, and I've been getting the pull off wrong on the first lick, the lick that I thought I had 120%, which I think is the reason why you do things slow. So I'm bringing this one down just to like 60% just to see if I can get the whole thing right because I don't want to get part of it wrong. Yep, 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 we got it. <laughs> I keep forgetting that if you're gonna be a jazz guy, you need to turn the tone knob down. It's the slide. Hey! Today I'm tired, because I was out all day, and I don't really want to practice. I know you won't get any better unless you practice when you don't want to practice. <laughs> I wanna try playing this with my eyes closed because I hear that's the way to really get a song down. I knew I would mess up when I knew it. Ah, ah, I'm tired. I've been waiting a lot of bars on 251, so I'm like, you know, it's time. We're just gonna do it full speed. It's really hard. Oh my gosh, my respect for jazz players is crazy. Cause I have to even think before I press play, I'm like, wait, which one is D minor? All right, it's the final day, final day. All right, I'm just trying to take it slow still. It's day seven, but I'm trying to take it slow. It's, a, it's getting a little better, right? So it's been seven days and I'm kind of scared, but it's time to see, like, full speed, can I play this lick? See how it goes. I'm equally as scared to show the solo part to see how much progress I've made on there. So looking back on that immediately, I can see some of the flaws that I had in playing that riff. Like I was really happy with the progress that I was able to make, but it's not perfect yet. And it's not something I feel like I could instantly bring to a jazz jam yet. And I think that's because it's not smooth. And I think that's because I was really trying to push myself a little bit speed wise, not as fast as some of the other you know guys who played Donnelly at 200 BPM. But I think there were a couple rough moments where it wasn't as smooth as it could be. And you could definitely hear some pick noise. And I actually contacted one of my friends, an incredible YouTube guitarist, one of the best out there in my opinion, named Rudy Ayub on some advice on playing fast. And he actually told me about my picking hand and how I needed to pick way lighter to be able to, to really glide along the string. So thank you, Rudy, for that. And that's one of the things I was really trying to get down during the last couple days is trying to pick lighter in terms of trying to gain that speed. And that's something I really want to work on going forward. But then amongst the arpeggios and like practical applications in an improvising context. That's where I also had to check myself after seven days. And again, it's something that wasn't in any way, shape or form perfect, but it felt like I was finally paying attention to the chord tones and finally starting to use the major scale a little bit more like a jazz player. But overall, the big question, can you master jazz guitar in a week? Heck no, man. I'm no like West Montgomery level prodigy, but the bigger question, I think I'm happy. I'm not happy with my guitar playing, but I'm happy that the spark is kind of back as a player who wants to practice more. And I think that's what this is about in the end. I didn't master jazz guitar, but I think the thing that I learned, I think even more than learning some new stuff about jazz guitar, I learned how to practice and I learned how to be excited about practice for the first time in a very long time. Even within this week, I wasn't just practicing jazz. I went back to practicing a lot 
of my pentatonic stuff and a lot of the rock stuff that I was really having trouble mastering. And it showed me how to slow down a song, how to really take the small elements and how to go into some of those technical aspects, like what Rudy was talking about when I was struggling with speed and really break stuff down. And I hope to continue. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you want to know anything more about jazz, make sure to check out Grant. I'll leave all his stuff in the description. It's been a fun journey. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most important of all, like most importantly, have a fantastic day. Thank you.